Hello, Farrister here, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Star Citizen ship, the Anvil Hurricane. Star Citizen is currently in alpha testing, and the Hurricane is one of the flyable ships. The Hurricane is a dual-seat combat fighter, meaning you can bring a friend along with you. I followed the usual format for this review, splitting into five sections, starting with a ship tour and deck flow, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating and purchasing costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you enjoy the review, please do subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. That helps you to be notified of future videos and helps me to grow the audience. Part 1. Ship Tour and Deck Layout This part of the review is as easy for the Hurricane as it was for the Super Hornet that I reviewed last week. In fact, the two fighters fill a similar niche, so I'll be referencing the Super Hornet a few times over the course of this review as point of comparison. There are just two seats, a front pilot seat and a rear gunner turret. Much like many of the other fighters, there is no other physicalised space inside, meaning no bed or storage places for boxes. Pilot access is via a retracting chair beneath the nose, with gunner access in a similar chair beneath the ball of the turret. Part 2. Combat Performance The Hurricane is described as a medium fighter, but the weaponry might lead you to believe it's heavier. On the nose, controlled by the pilot, are two gimbaled size 3 weapons. They're swappable for fixed size 4s if you're into that. Which I am. So for this video, I'm using two Revenant repeaters. On the turret are four size 3 weapons. Likewise, I've swapped them out for, you guessed it, ballistic repeaters. Additionally, there are four size 2 missiles to add to the firepower. Unlike the Super Hornet, the turret must be operated by a second person. But it's worth it. The firepower from the turret feels incredible. The turret moves responsively, and it's fun to be in the back seat blasting away. The arc covers the top of the ship, meaning the gunner can engage targets independently of the pilot, but can't really dip beneath the nose, meaning the pilot has to lead targets from beneath in order to bring all of the guns to bear. The big challenge for the Hurricane, similar to the Super Hornet, is survivability. The two size 1 shield generators don't do much once the hurricane starts taking fire, and once the shields are down, it melts away very quickly. All of that means the hurricane is all about the firepower, which is considerable, but is a bit of a glass cannon. Part 3. Handling and Visibility Starting with visibility, the hurricane does not disappoint. Although there are two struts, they don't really impede the view, which extends out to the front, top and sides. That makes it easy to take off and land, as well as finding targets in combat. Moreover, the way that the thrusters are positioned makes strafing very natural, which really helps when landing. Even with a relatively small amount of flight time in the Hurricane compared to some of my other ships, it made me feel very confident to do some bold landings. Albeit, I must admit, in the footage, it doesn't look quite so bold. In terms of handling, the Hurricane flies well. Outside of atmosphere, it's very responsive, which makes it easy to point the nose precisely at the target, which is helpful if using fixed weapons. Acceleration is good, though deceleration is not quite so strong, so it's often a little quicker just to flip 180 and accelerate backwards. Within atmosphere is where the Hurricane really shines. In the new flight model, it's not as nimble as some of the ultra-lightweight fighters, but the Hurricane handles very well, and most importantly, predictably well. That gives you a really good feeling as a pilot, as you can interpret what impact your control inputs are going to have, and just how much you need to give it to roll out. It's really satisfying to be flying really close to the surface in the Hurricane. Part 4. Operating Costs as you might expect for a ship this size, it's really cheap to rearm, repair and refuel the Hurricane. That means that any kind of missions will turn a profit. So I should qualify, by any kind of missions, I mean combat contracts. The lack of any cargo bay or physicalised space inside the Hurricane means there's no option to do delivery or cargo running. I found myself picking contracts carefully, however, due to the brittle nature of the Hurricane. Thank you. 
Running those combat missions where the hurricane was at a clear advantage was very satisfying, but as soon as any meaningful opposition came up, felt strained. The Quantum Drive, albeit very slow, comes with a fairly reasonable range, so you can traverse most of the Stanton system on a single tank, but it may take some time to do so. I think this will mean the Hurricane might be a good choice for a carrier fighter, where the mothership could take on larger threats, as well as ferry the Hurricane around the system. As far as purchasing costs go, the Hurricane comes in at $195, or 1.2 million Alpha UEC in-game. The first price is very steep. For that price, there are some far more versatile options out there for a combat ship. For example, anything in the Cutlass series. The in-game price is a bit more reasonable, providing a solid option for a pair who would like a fighter to use as a two-man combat machine, but have other ships to fill other roles. So, part five, the verdict. I'd start by saying when you get into a fight with the Hurricane, whether it's the pilot or the gunner, the firepower that you put down range feels awesome. And it is. With two size 4 weapons plus a quad mount size 3 turret, that's more firepower than a lot of her peers. With a little time on target, it'll melt away even bigger ships, and leaves you feeling that you're wielding something incredible. But I just can't get my head around the price tag. I really wouldn't recommend pledging for the Hurricane, simply because, even if this was your favourite ship in the verse, the in-game purchase is relatively cheap, and you'd be far better putting your pledge money into something else. I'm also left a little confused by how Anvil would have the Hurricane and the Super Hornet in their lineup. Both fill a similar niche, a two-seater combat fighter. The skeptic in me is thinking that the Hurricane was included for the sake of already having similar assets readily available from other ships in the Anvil lineup, such as the Gladiator and the Hornet series, meaning it would be quick to turn around in order to make some quick sales. Maybe that's harsh. But I think my resounding verdict would be fun to fly, but I wouldn't buy. Once again, thank you to all those of you who subscribe to the channel. Please press that like button if you enjoyed watching. And for anybody looking for a group who plays the current patch of Star Citizen regularly, I've included a link to my organisation in the video description. So to close out, thank you for watching, and I hope you'll hear from me in the next video.